Okay there, singing world. This is part two of Violetta's aria. This is A Forse Lui. I'm going to assume that you've already watched the introduction in the first video. If you haven't, there's a link to that in the description below. So let's continue on. Uh, so we're going on with the cavatina part, A Forse Lui. So we're going to do one word at a time first and then line by line. Okay, so now we have an interjection, A, which is also a strong monosyllable. So it's going to cause the next F to double. Okay, so the word perhaps forse is a closed O. The R rolls because it touches the S and the E would be closed, right? So now um, the final E is taken off and the next word is the word is. So it's a forse, right? So it's an open E and I exaggerated the open E a little bit, right? So the word a is also a doubling word. And Louis, so you're going to have two L's. So Louis, the accent is on the, the, the U, right? So there's more U than E. Louis. So if you notice at the beginning of this cavatina, there's, there are all these rests, which are always a source of confusion um, about how to sing them, right? But I think Verdi wrote, we, if we do it from Verdi's point of view, where Verdi picks up the libretto and he looks at these first couple words and he, he reads it with all of these phrasal doublings and he comes up, he reads and says, A forse lui, a forse lui. And you see now he's compelled to write those rests. So then you have, a forse lui. See, and now you have those rests. And some of them are different because the doublings go across those rests. So I would suggest to you to read it several times like this and then go back to your music. And you'll find that those, those eighth notes surrounded by rests are going to be um, very much, e much easier for you to, to pull off, right? A forse lui. So that's what you want to do with these doublings. Okay, let's go on. Uh, the word K is a closed E. And again, remember K is a strong monosyllable. Right, so a strong monosyllable will cause that phrasal the next thing to double, right? So the next L is doubled. Que l'anima. Okay, so um, there is a book actually with all of the strong monosyllables and the weak monosyllables written out. The weak monosyllables are actually easy to memorize because there are much there are, there are way fewer weak monosyllables and strong monosyllables. You can count them on two hands. Um, if you look in Singer's Italian, that's Evelina Colorni's book. Singer's Italian, it's a, a, a diction book. Uh, it's a green book. You probably had it in diction class. The last five uh, or so pages, she lists all the strong monosyllables, all the words that cause phrasal doubling, and all the weak monosyllables. And also two syllable words that cause phrasal doublings, like come, sopra, uh, contra, and a few others. Um, so, so it's a very good resource to have. You can always check and check out if you have a strong monosyllable, weak monosyllable, right? So, um, so again, we're going back. It's kelanima. So the word K is a strong monosyllable. Let's go on. Solinga, right? So pretty straightforward. Closed O. The N assimilates middle of the tongue into the ga. Uh, the word ne is a is a strong monosyllable, right? So this this version of ne. Ne tumulti, double T. Uh, again, we go up to the double T, we don't say it. We do a long A vowel, we stop phonation, and then we don't say the T, but then we say it. Ne tumulti. And in, in the time you have, that's, you know, you, you do whatever you can. Going on, godea. So all these A in, the, in, the, in this tense, godea, it's closed D. E. Sovente. So here, here we have a perfect example. We have two closed vowels on the unstressed, right? Uh, and a penultimate stress, the, the normal stress, and this is a stressed vowel that's open. So the O is closed, the E is open, and then the E is closed. Soven, right? Sovente. Uh, going on, pingere. So all the A day verbs are closed. Pingere. Notice the N assimilation, the N with the middle of the tongue into the J, pingere. De is closed in this, 
instance, suoi. So it's open O, suoi, right? I'm exaggerating again, right? But it's not suoi. Doesn't rhyme with like with soy, right? Suoi. Right, going on. Colori, all closed. O O E. Let's you can do purity tests, right? O E. Colori, and then you can you can compare. Notice that R never harmonizes as it does in English, right? So if we said it with a with a really thick American accent, it would be colori, and the R would harmonize the O, and that's what I mean. And the O becomes really not pure, right? So it's O ri. The R and the O have nothing to do with one another. Going on, O culti. I did in slow motion the double K sound, right? Again, we go up to the K, we don't say it. O culti. Going on, lui. Again, the lion's share of the vowel is U. Uh, so now you have a slight double M, right? Don't do too much on this, right? You don't want to overdo. Che modesto. See, just a little bit. Che modesto. Not che modesto. You don't really want to hang on to that. Modesto. So you have an open E. Modesto. Uh, so now, here's the difference in lyric diction with spoken, uh, spoken Italian. When you have an S, I could say, I could speak and say modesto and kind of hiss that S, see? Modesto. But when I sing, I have to separate the S, make sure the S is completely on the next note that it's written on. So modesto, modesto, not modesto. You see the difference, right? So that's a big difference between spoken and sung Italian. Going on, a vigile. Again, the slightest double V, right? If if you're in doubt, just leave it out because this is like this is slight. You don't want a vigile to really overdo this. You get a good thing and you exaggerate it and it becomes not elegant, right? A vigile, a vigile. No, no, never, right? Just the slightest bit. Going on. So um, agre is sicknesses, and it's a very old-fashioned way of saying it. It's an open e. So allegre, right? So the first E is open, the second one is closed. Next, solie, solie, open O. So G L I is lie, lie. So it's like an, it's a Y pronounced, right? Preceded by an L. So ye, lie. So you can practice it backwards if you have trouble with that. Ascese. So S C E is sh. Ascese. Destandomi. Destandomi. Right? So the, the E is, is uh, closed. Destandomi. <coughs> Pardon me. And then um, the, again, the S rule, right? Not destando. Destandomi al. Okay, so. Al, double L, we've had that. Amor, we've had, except for it was in its full form before, now it's truncated, right? Amor. So this R will roll, because it's final. Right? Uh, the interjection, a. A quel amor. So quel, Q, uh, closed, closed D, the A doubles the K sound, we've had this already. Amor, we've had. Uh, palpito, palpito. So you notice the L before the P phonates. It, you know, actually doubles, right? So you hold the L in position while it, uh, it phonates a single T. And the word a eh, strong monosyllable will make a double P. Che palpito. Going on, D E L is a del, del universo. Open E on the stress of Universo. Close though. Notice the R rolls because it touches a consonant in this word. Now here's a very interesting word because this was intiero with an open E in Old Italian. It had an I. So a lot of words that had an open E were open. Right? And the old fashioned pronunciation of this was intero. 
open or open in. Probably in Verdi's day, it was intero. Now, everybody in the world says intero. So, you have a choice. You can be modern or you can be old-fashioned in this word. Either one will work, right? So, intero is now what would be listed as the pronunciation of this word. You, you might rhyme. See, now, if you look in the next word, next uh, line, it rhymes with altero, which is, again, from altiero. Old Italian had a, had a semivowel. And so it's an open E, right? So Verdi might have heard this as intero, altero. So it's your choice. So uh, going on, misterioso. So this, um, this word is a very hard word to sing elegantly, right? It's very easy to say misterioso. Uh, in this theater, it comes out misteri, right? Right? Really, really hard. So mis, mi, Stereoso. And if you notice, Verdi put marks on this word all the time, either staccato dots or dashes, to be very careful about how you sing the S. Mi stereoso. Right? So you have a beautiful semivowel at the end, closed E, closed O, and a separated S, and yet legato. Right? Mi stereoso. Not mi you don't want the S on the first note ever when you sing. Going on, altero, right? Single R, the L phonates into the T, open E. We love to roll R's after open vowels, right? Altero. Going on, croce. So here's a, this is a very hard word to sing because I hear all the time the ch doubled. So I hear croce. Croce, and especially as we get more, um, we get more expressive. So Americans, when we get expressive, we go for consonants, right? So we we go right. The Italians, when they get more expressive, they don't go croce, they go croce. The vowels get longer. Okay. So and and also he put something like con eleganza or um, dolcissimo. Or, or something, right? Leggerissimo, maybe, right? He wrote in the score. And, and that's why, for this, that it's very easy to go croce delizia and get really, really on the consonants. Um, so, the A makes a double D, right? So you have e delizia. Delizia. Okay, so now let's talk about the next word, because this is interesting, too, because when you speak... You can say delizia with a TZ and a little stop in phonation. You see, delizia. It's like the word grazie. Grazie. It's a little stop in phonation when you speak. But when you sing, you have to elongate the E almost to the point where the TZ becomes a semivowel. Delizia. See, it's like a Y, right? Delizia. And that's the other reason why it says leggerissimo on the score. Croce delizia. Not croce delizia with all of those stops. Does that make sense? So listen for that very carefully. Delizia. And al cor. C O R. Cor. Heart. Heart. Right? So cor. Core. Both are, right? Whatever form you see the word hot, heart in, and it's cuore. Cuore is another is the more modern form with the UL, right? So cor, this is the old fashioned. Core or cuore. Open O. Let's go on into the little bridge section. Um in another video, if I'm asked or if you make a request, I would do the second the the second strophe of the cavatina, but in this this time most people cut it, so I'm I'm going to go on. So let's go on to folie. So Here's a close though. The accent is on the E vowel, right? The E is actually not a semivowel. Folie. So you have to, there's a lot of energy that goes into this word. First of all, close though, you have to hold the L in position for phonation, right? Folie. And you have to do it twice the same way. Okay, going on. Delirio. So notice the difference between the two E's in this. The first one is an accented E, and the second one is. A semivowel. 
and then the e the the a vowel the e right at the beginning is on the non stress so it's closed e delirio going on vano so a ah, and the unstress the a ah is the stress the o is closed e questo we've had these words already so let's go on povera so the word povero or povera is an open o and then a closed d we usually do the opposite don't we we do povera right i'm exaggerating right you probably don't do it that badly but i'll bet you have opened the e the accent is on the first syllable the e is closed povera donna double n see a lot of effort on that n right open o donna and then we have sola one l not sola but sola abbandonata double b again is not abbandonata right abbandonata the word has a lot of expression so we have a lot of vowel ah, oh, ah. Right, lots of lots of vowel. Abbandonata, and you keep going. Right, in questo. Notice the n assimilation again into the k sound. Right, in questo, and the s rule is in effect. Right, the s is on completely on the second syllable. Popoloso, o o o o, four o vowels in a in a row, exactly the same. Deserto, a eh, a eh, a eh. deserto. See purity test, a eh, a eh. deserto. Because I speak English all day, I am always doing purity tests when I'm coaching people, right? So going on, che appellano. So the third person plural, they do something, they call, right? Is always a, a strange stress, right? Parlano. Appellano, appellano. So double P, double L, open E. Parigi. So single, right? Not Parigi. I hear Parigi. Parigi. Single consonants. Che spero. Right? So this is going to elide, right? Into the OR. O R. That means now or our is a closed O. O R that means gold is a op is an open O, right? The full forms of these words now our ora ends with an A, an A right? So it's not mistakable if you have the final uh, vowel, but if you don't, auto that's gold, see? But if it's or it's gold. Or is now, right? So what could I hope for in Right now, right? Che spero più. So più is a semi-vowel. Che far. So notice we've doubled these, right? Che far, che spero. The word che is a strong monosyllable. Uh, che far. So deggio or deggio. It doesn't matter. Deggio is more common now, open, right? It's it's also it's an old fashioned way of saying stuff, right? So but the you can say it either open or closed. So deggio. Notice that it's deggio is I. The the I is in there. If you said deggio, it would still mean the same thing. It's just missing the I for emphasis, right? It's just the full word without the, the contraction. Okay, going on. Here's an interesting word, folks. When you say the noun, it's open, joya, because the stress is on the O. Where's the stress now? It's on the ire, so it's joire. How many times have you heard joire, right? It's joire. So, close though. Going on. Divoluta. The accent is on the last syllable. Right? So, voluta. Ta de was the original word. They they truncate the ta the de right, and then now the a ah has an accent on it to show that the stress is on the truncation right. Voluta. So what happens is when you have a truncated word, usually there's a slight phrasal doubling after it, so the end will double. Ne vortici closed o. Perire all closed right. 
to close these. So perire. So what we will do is we will continue um, the with the cabaletta in an, in the next video. And before we do that, we'll go back in this video and read uh, everything in uh, line by line. So here we go. A forse lui che l'anima solinganetto multi godea sovente pingere de suoi colori occulti. So it's a big rhyme from tumulti to occulti. Lui che modesto e vigile, allegre soglie ascese e nuova febbre accese. De standomi all'amor. I almost said ascese twice, if you notice, right? So you have ascese and then you have accese. Uh, a quell'amor che palpito dell'universo intero, or intero, misterioso altero, croce delizia al cor. Follie. Delirio vano è questo, povera donna, sola, abbandonata in questo popoloso deserto che appellano Parigi, che spero or più, che far de Gio, gioire di volutà ne vortici perire. Thank you for watching. Please continue on to part three. Please give a like and please share. And don't forget to subscribe. And uh, we'll, we'll either see you at, at the opera or in the next video in part three. Thank you for watching.